Hi everyone, today's video will be about the Koyomotsuki Aizunuri Hananuri blush brush. Before I get into the review, I want to show you the box it comes in. All of the brushes come in this nice box. They're made out of recycled paper cranes from the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. The inside has this beautiful lining for each brush. And I do appreciate the attention to detail and packaging. And I'm a big fan of the packaging. Koyomo is a small brand which I believe needs more recognition and love. I've been testing this blush brush for the past month as I find it to be a chameleon and I wanted to test it with a variety of formulas to let you know if it's worth the high price. I'll get more into detail about being a chameleon later. Starting off with the handle, it is made out of wood but they don't specify what kind of wood. It has a flat base to stand upright. And I thought the handle would feel more substantial in terms of weight because it looks weighty to me, but it is indeed lightweight. The lacquer is made using the traditional Aizu method of tamamushi nuri. And tamamushi means jewel beetle and nuri means lacquering in Japanese. The finish is glossy and glass-like. I'll link the link below for you to read details on the lacquering if you're interested. The color is dark red and it's gorgeous. So the logo, the font has changed since I bought my first pink set back in 2015. The pink is on the right. The new logo is intentionally more faded now. And they also added a trademark on the bottom right. I personally prefer the old font without the trademark. Okay, so the hair is made out of high quality cycle hole. And it's taken from goats living in the, I'm just gonna put it down. It's taken from goats living in the Yangtze region in China in the 1970s or before that. This kind of hair is rare, which is why Koyomo cycle hole typically costs more than other brands. The hair tips are transparent and the closest thing I can compare it to is silk threads. This is a way of distinguishing high quality hairs. So if the tips look very fine and silky and silk-like, then it's very high quality. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see in this camera or in this lighting. And I also did use it, so it's, it's kind of hard to see, but you might be able to see how it kind of glistens in the light. I call it a chameleon due to its ability to adapt to the formula you are using and apply it in apply it with an optimal finish. Depending on how hard and how many times you dip into the product, it can pick up both a small amount to a lot of product. One light dab or swipe is enough with a soft press blush. Medium to hard pressed products requires more dips, but it doesn't have any issues picking up all types of formulas, and I love that about this brush. This type of brush does work excellently for building up product similar to squirrel blush brushes. So when I use it, sometimes I think that it's similar to like the Chikuhodo RC2 or the Chikuhodo Lumiere blush brush from their 2015 Christmas collection. It does feel like clouds are caressing your face, like you really have to try to be able to know what I'm talking about, but it, yeah, it does feel very soft and pillowy. The size is medium sized. So I think people with small faces and if you prefer a small targeted application would most likely this would most likely think that this is a little big for them. Um, I'd like to emphasize small and small targeted application. This applies precisely, but if you are more accustomed to something smaller like the size of the Hakuhodo J5521, then it will be bigger than that. So the J5521 is on the right. And see like this. This brush also makes a nice powder brush. It applies powder evenly and smoothly. 
The hair length is 39 millimeters, which is a little longer than my preferred length of 35 millimeters, but it's not floppy by any means. It, has, it also has a little bit of airiness to it. So in terms of flexibility, it does have a fair amount of resistance and doesn't splay out much at all when you use it to buff. And I'd like to say that the hairs are springy and I think the, there are not a lot of like hairs, goat hairs that are this fine, that are springy. I think normally I correlate that to like Canadian scroll hair, but this, this is surprisingly springy, which I also enjoy. Okay, so in terms of density, I'd say it's medium due to the fineness of the hair. While there's a good amount of hair, each strand is so thin, so it feels less dense than the Haku Totsuho version. I love that it doesn't diffuse blush into a larger surface area when applying as well. So these are the blushes that I tried it with. I'm gonna pull it out. Here's a three blush. This is Japanese. And just wanted to show you how it looks like. This blush brush applies it very pigmentedly and precisely with a Japanese soft to medium pressed blush such as three. And then I have a NARS palette this is the Narcissist, uh, what is this one? Unfiltered one. And I tried it with this purple one right here. It picked up a lot of product and applied very pigmentedly. I, re I recommend going in with a very light hand and soft, a very light hand with soft pressed Nars blushes because it picks up so much product and then you just look like a clown. <laughs> and then we have the By Terry uh, blush in New Dance and when it applied this one it applied a soft and slightly diffused finish which was similar to Grey Scroll and then I have a Milani baked blush in Rose Doro so the blush did apply very smoothly and made the shimmers appear fine without accentuating pores I didn't really like the finish on this blush with any other goat brush I've tried it with because they always picked up too much product and glitter but the the Koyomo one is just perfect so perfect for this baked blush brush or sorry this so perfect for this baked blush I'm saying blush and brush a lot and then I have another one that I tried it with this I tried it with with both Clinique Cola Pop and Fig Pop and the brush did pick up a lot of product and it applied very nicely as well. And then lastly, I have the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush. Um, and I, I did go into it lightly, like I didn't wanna just like jab into it at a 90 degree angle because that would damage the hairs, but I went into it lightly and it was able to pick up product without any issues and it applied naturally and softly without being over blended when buffed. So I'm gonna put these <laughs> away now, but I did really wanna show you what types of blushes I tried it with, so you, get, so you can get a good idea of what it works with. And it works with all of them. So now I'm gonna compare it with the White Pearl Hakuo Totsuho version which is the new, the newest line that Koyomo came out with recently. Okay, the, this brush, the white one, is denser since the hairs are thicker. So I'm just gonna try to show you on camera just how, how much denser it is. The Ski's Psycho Hole hairs are softer, but not by a large amount. They're both very soft and soft enough for all types of skin. So the Ski does put less pressure on the face when I buff in circular motions. You can see this one is a little bit more flexible. 
I do prefer the Tsuki as it makes it feel softer on the face and also means it will move less product underneath when I'm going in circular motions. The handle weights feel about the same. I think the white pearl one feels it's a little bit heavier. And application wise, application and finish wise, they're pretty different. The most crucial difference like this is the most crucial difference in my opinion. The reason why I don't absolutely love the Hakuho Ototsuho brush, like the, the white one and the pink one, is because the more you buff, regardless of adding more product or not, the blush becomes overblended and diffused in a slightly larger surface area. I prefer precise and pigmented blush, which is what the Tsuki provides. So the Tsuki can also apply softly depending on the product, but pigmented at the same time. I do spend less time using the Tsuki to, to apply blush compared to the Haku Ototsuho ones. I would recommend the Tsuki blush brush over the white and pink blushes, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> pink brushes because, um, because of, you know, what I just said above, but only if you like the type of blush application as I do. So if you, if you personally prefer diffused and well blended blush, the white and the pink versions are your type of brushes. If you want to save money and are indifferent to the finish and pigmentation, then the Hakuo Totsuho ones are also more suited for you. I initially thought the Tsuki cheek would be more of a collector's item. But after testing it out and trying to find fault with it in hopes that the Hako Totsuho versions were just as good has changed my mind. Like I, I actually do honestly think that this brush applies and performs better than the other ones. Now, if I had gotten the Tsuki, the powder brush version of this, I'm certain I would have deemed it as a collector's item and advised against spending that much on a brush that was softer than the Haku Ototsuho version as they probably give the same finish. Because for powder, it's not, I don't think it makes that much of a difference as opposed to blush application. The Haku Ototsuho powder brush was not a brush I was particularly fan fond of up until recently and I gave it another try and I've been loving it for powder. So it's the pink version, the powder version of the pink brush and I'll talk about that in my next video. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thank you, bye.